On July 18th, 2019, Animation Studio Kyoto Animation was set ablaze in an act of revenge that left 36 dead and more than 30 injured. It's gone down in history as one of the biggest modern day massacres in Japan, the first of which to occur at an animation studio. For a country with a very low crime rate, news of this nature quickly made its way around the world. This act of arson was one powered by hate and revenge in an otherwise peaceful and passionate area. The people working here were undoubtedly masters of their craft, dedicated to putting more heart into their work than any other studio. The stories they told reached many, including myself. Stories that left us in tears of happiness and sorrow. Stories that enveloped us in inspiration and motivation through some of the darkest times in our lives. It's an animation studio that gave life to not just us, but those who worked on it. With a majority of female workers in an otherwise male-dominated industry, a focus on proper salaries and humane work hours with variable benefits, the ripest form of care in a workplace which translated into some of the most compassionate of projects. For it's a place that's unperturbed by such standards such as cheap commission work, unpaid overtime, or by how fast the next frame can be drawn. It's a studio that's powered by the quality of the anime art form. A truly beautiful animation studio. Before I continue, I want to further describe how it is that I see KyoAni in my own terms. Because to me, KyoAni is more than just another company. To describe KyoAni would be to describe that of UFOTable. It's like the parental figure of the anime landscape. Their attention to detail puts most modern works to shame and sets the bar extremely high without working their employees to the ground. Scenes that would normally be simple still frames are brought to life with incredible in-betweening work. Likewise, the flow of their animation is very nuanced and has an extremely gentle feel to it. It's simple to follow and it's very easy on the eyes. In relation, their characters tend to have a very bouncy and cute feel to them with every move they make as KyoAni's team can take their time to accomplish this effect. The forerunners of this type of style were in the way of Naoko Yamada and Yukiko Horiguchi. Their work is arguably what solidified KyoAni's style and it's been the reference point for many of KyoAni's future projects. But this studio is more than just their animation team. It's a community of workers that make this animation come to life. Many scenes are taken right out of Japan with a photorealistic style that wasn't possible without a research team. And with it, their compositing team makes all drawn work encompass the feeling of a comforting dream with high contrast colors and incredible depth of field layering. In these created worlds, we have character designs that are the pure embodiment of compassion and kindness while the stories told there focus on the introspective anomalies of everyday life. Kyo Annie makes worlds that you want to live in. No matter how deceptively cruel those worlds might end up being, they long to be explored for their reserved beauty. This is the embodiment of Kyoto Animation, the white horse of the animation entertainment industry. For the past nearly two decades, it's been this. A studio that never lost its way. A studio that was motivated purely by its craft and nothing more steadfast and progressive in its approach to high quality works a studio that continued to grow more and more beautiful every day until one day that growth was stunted its branches clipped by wrongful contempt it couldn't have happened to a better studio one that was founded on humble beginnings rather than purely monetary incentives dedication fueled by high moral standards and more love than many of us deserved on that day, many families had to bear the hardships that accompanied losing their loved ones, good passionate people whose hearts shined through their craft. It was a sad day in history for Japan, and one that made us very fearful for the future. In the many months that followed this horrendous event, many more details came to light about how all of this happened, as well as what happened right before these people met their eventual fate. Details so horrible I refuse to mention them in this video. Much of this information can be found online, but it's sufficient to say the beautiful area of Kyoto was like hell on earth. So much so that other animation studios feared for the safety of their peers. After the harsh reality set in, funerals were already being planned. The surviving members were not even able to attend all of them as there were too many funerals for them to handle. 
even still, the surviving staff made a memorial for those lost in September of that same year. It didn't take long before flowers started piling up. KyoAni supporters flocked to the area as various donations were set up to support those affected. To this day, over $30 million have been donated, all of which were tax-exempt from the Japanese government for the first time in history. KyoAni did not take a single penny from this pile as the CEO and founder Hideaki Hata wanted all the money to go to the families. Money that would hopefully help those impacted get the help they needed. It was something that everyone involved needed time to process. Now more than two years have passed since then. The silent suffering and grief must have been unimaginable. And for many, all we could do was hope and pray for the well-being of everyone involved. In remembrance of the horrible events that day, Hideaki Hata and all of the affected families held a memorial at the previous Kyo Annie building on July 18th of this year, for the two-year anniversary since the event. Many feelings were shared on that day, feelings that were kept in for all this time. In conjunction with the in-person memorial, Kyo Annie released a memorial video for everyone else and shared the thoughts of those affected in an anonymous and sensitive manner. Since that day, all records of the stream have since been deleted. I had planned on transcribing some of the text here, but after the video was deleted, I decided against it. In addition, the victims' names will not be mentioned here. The comments from some of the families may be in a language that I'm not entirely fluent in, but some of the comments... Eh, they were a bit too much to handle sometimes. No one deserved this. No one should have to leave this world in such a horrifying manner or live in a world without their loved ones who left so prematurely. This is an event that cannot be forgotten, an event that cannot be ignored, because the impact these 36 talented people made on the animation landscape is worthwhile. Whether it's work that you've seen or work that's been inspired by KyoAni's work, the lost souls of this studio will reach you in some capacity. That's what I truly believe, because at this point, that's what I think it means to be a true anime fan. KyoAni's branches might have been clipped that day and many hopes and aspirations were lost. However, its roots remained. Setbacks were immense. Most of their work was destroyed and many of their best people were gone. But they picked themselves back up and didn't flee into obscurity. After nearly two arduous years of grieving and recovery, the studio was slowly starting to resurface, and they were planning their fated comeback into the world of anime once more. Many of us were afraid that they wouldn't come back, but they did, and their vigorous return put many minds at ease. To start, in February of 2020, they released their first new project, it was an OVA for Baja no Studio, an anime for kids about the adventures of Baja and his friends and their daily life living at an animation studio nonetheless. I watched it and it was in no doubt inspired by KyoAni themselves. It had this air of curious whimsy that comes with exploring something new and creating good out of what can also be considered bad. In my opinion, it was the perfect re-entry for them back into the anime landscape and proved that they didn't lose any of their luster from their time away. However, it's their next project that would be the real test. They had always planned to follow up on one of their most successful series, Violet Evergarden. Naturally, this project got pushed back, but in September 2020, exactly one year after the first memorial, the long-awaited sequel came in the way of a theatrical release. I didn't get to see this movie, but according to worldwide critical acclaim, it's everything the series was and so much more. An embodiment of the work that came before it and just as beautifully serene. Violet Evergarden was always one of KyoAni's most visually attractive and delicately told works, so hearing this praise is one of the most reassuring things a KyoAni fan can possibly hear. And as hard as it is to believe, this movie was only the beginning of KyoAni's resurgence into the anime landscape. After starting with an OVA, a movie, and a couple of really well-made side commercials, KyoAni finally made their way back into the TV anime space this current season with the long-awaited return of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. For me personally, this was the first new work of KyoAni that I watched since the event. At the time, I was 
very anxious that the heart of what made KyoAni's work so special would no longer be intact. But as you already know, I was proven wrong within the first minute no less, with an opening that starts like the opening of my favorite KyoAni TV show, Nichijo. A love letter to the KyoAni work that came before Dragon Maid. Seeing the parallel here brought me back to the good old days and made me remember that these IPs are still in good hands. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid Season 2 feels just like Season 1 in every way and more. All the movements, effects, and direction have never been more on point with a classic KyoAni show. Everything is still here. The elegant animation we've all come to love has not lost its luster. It's refined, smooth, easy to follow, and houses all the sweet emotional potential you could want for telling any number of stories. It was only when Dragon Maid Season 2 came out that it became fully apparent to me. Kyo Annie has not regressed. In fact, this brilliant studio's heart is beating louder than ever with newfound passion. Every new episode of Dragon Maid that comes out makes me realize this even more. For the surviving members of Kyo Annie, the result of their oppression from horrible circumstances gave rise to even more dedication towards their work. I see that now. Some of their wounds may never heal, but I hope that the satisfaction they gain from what they make can help heal those wounds little by little and direct everyone toward a more promising future. To help with that, on November 20th and 21st, KyoAni will be hosting a music festival for their fans in an ode of inspiration for the future. A big part of the emotional impact of KyoAni's work comes from their music, powered by some truly remarkable music artists. Artists such as Screen Mode, Fauna, ZAQ, and so many more. It's a great chance to further reinvigorate the burning soul that is Kyoto Animation. Nothing inspires people more than great music, and that's just a fact. Because of the pandemic, many of us will be unable to take part, but nonetheless, I hope we can all find a way to be a part of KyoAni's constant strive to be as loving as possible to its fans. We may not be able to do much for the studio we all love, but sometimes our compassion is enough. Because at the end of the day, they helped give us some of that compassion in the first place. And that compassion is something that will never die. And when you think about it, that's the beautiful thing about the media industry. As long as this earth still stands, their work and the impact that they create will never go away. Their legacy is boundless. Even long after my time and yours, they will continue to inspire people for centuries to come. Their work will live on in those who pick up the torch. To deliver the spirit of their predecessors and keep the spirit of what they left behind alive telling stories that reaffirm the values of life and all the quandaries that accompany them. Stories that give us just a little more hope for a brighter and gentler future. These people are part of the reason why I love anime so much today. So, Kyoto Animation, I love you. Even though you don't know me and probably will never see this, I wish you and all of your staff the best future that you deserve. Thank you for everything.